Hello, Card Runners members. This is Zach Elwood, the author of Reading Poker Tells. This is a new training video aimed at improving your live poker skills. This one is about eye contact tells and the tendencies players sometimes exhibit when they hold weak or strong hands. It uses P.S. Hines, the 2011 World Series of Poker main event champion, as an example of someone who had some significant eye contact patterns. So a lot of people ask me what the most reliable types of poker tells are. And I think uh, eye contact tells are probably one of the most important ones or the ones you see the most often and the most reliable. Um, so people with these kinds of eye contact, eye contact tells are going to have one of two types of tendencies. The first tendency is they'll be more likely to stare at their opponent when bluffing and avoid eye contact when they're value betting. The other uh, tendency, the reverse, is they'll be more likely to avoid eye contact when bluffing and they'll stare at their opponent when value betting. Those are two opposite ways that this tell could show up and most people, well the people that have those tells will show one or the other. Some people won't have this kind of tell. So I try to look for the those one of those tendencies when players are making significant uh, turn and river bets and sometimes with uh, big bets preflop too it might show up but usually just on the significant uh, the bigger turn in river bets is what I'm looking for. Um, so let's look at some uh, televised footage that I think shows this tendency pretty well. This is footage of P.S. Hines from the two, uh, 2011 World Series main event final table. Uh, so the first time I noticed this tell with him when I was watching it was in this hand here. So let's just watch it through from the beginning or near the beginning, and, and you can watch and see if you notice anything um, eye contact related. Talk to them during breaks or whenever they can uh, about what the other player has. So Stashko has just raised them. You can see to 4.25, and um, Heinz is thinking. I'll just I'll just tell you now. He has uh, aces, pocket aces, is what Heinz has. You'll probably notice that uh, Hines isn't looking uh, too much at Stashko, barely at all. He's looking down, barely looking at him after he bets, uh, making a little bit of eye contact, but uh, very little. Well, just we'll watch the flop too. Look at this. The pattern continues. There's the call. I don't know. Going in, I, I don't think Heinz is very strong, but we're going to find out some more information, see what happens on the flop. Twenty-one and a half million in the middle. Deuce four. So Heinz five. has pocket aces. Obviously, a pretty good flop for that. Is it frustrating when you put so much? In the middle, pre-flop, and then you can, like obviously he's looking down, down a lot, a hand like ace -queen, which not looking at Stashko at all, hardly. Has that hand. You know, it's unlikely that Stashko has a piece of that flop either. So he can't. But the most significant the part of this is, uh, continue on some level. in my book, I talk about categorizing tells so by uh, before you bet and and, and after you bet, and the significance of this tell is usually during and after a bet. Because that's when uh, they just focus on their that's when it's most likely to be seen. So I usually try to notice this right at the moment of betting, and then the moments after the betting is, is usually when it's most significant. So let's watch. Uh, let's watch him when he bets. He makes a little bit of eye contact, but stays mostly looking down. All right. So then Stashko folds. So we'll stop it there. Uh, but this was uh, that was very different behavior from how Heinz usually looked in most spots. Uh, he liked to stare at his opponents a lot. So we'll look at uh, now. Let's look at some high, uh, some hands where Heinz was uh, betting vulnerable hands or bluffs. So you can see some uh, some more some some baseline behavior that he usually had. Okay, this is a spot where uh, Heinz has uh, Jack Five here. He had raised preflop, and now uh, Stash goes 
uh, betting into him on this flop. Hines is going to bluff raise here. Now watch how much uh, watch how much Hines is going to stare at Stashko during after the bet here. This is his usual mo. The case where you see the preflop raiser continuation betting, and does it say he's got a weaker hand? He's trying to get and wait, you know, like I said, the significant spot is is during and after the bet. Is, is when I try to look for it. He could very well have a king so we'll wait until he puts the bet in. You know, king ten, king jack, pot to really make the comparison. Jack. But I don't think it's as big as king jack. Maybe a nine or a queen in his hand just wants to hope that he has the best hand. He just wins it right here. Tashko looks like he's got, or uh, Hines is uh, putting a raise together. So Hines figuring Pretty Tash steady stare there. Eleven point two million. Keeps it up for a while. That's that was his usual mo. Raise from Hines. And we'll look at another hand. Two-hour levels. And this one he's uh, gonna. Stashko just uh, three bet him. Hines is gonna four bet. Hines has come over the top with uh, seven nine is what he has. And you'll notice it's the same. Behavior here with the steady staring during and after the bet, and before too. But I, I think the uh, the during and after the bet behavior is more meaningful for for comparing. So let's just watch this. That's basically poker in a nutshell. What does my opponent want me to do? And do the opposite. As long as you can figure that out, Mr. Chad, you're good to go. And does that work outside of poker? <laughs> <laughs> Just how your dad drives in New York. <laughs> okay, Here so he's go. making the bet now. One stack, two stacks. This kid is relentless. This is what we call relentless aggression. Those Never giving up. Those stacks are uh, 10 million each. And, have a re and I wouldn't be shocked if he's doing this light again. Very similar to the last hand. Stares at him while he's putting the bet out and, and afterwards really steadily. Where Hines was bluffing. In this one, uh, Hines bet, Stashko raised. In this spot, Hines has ace queen. I think it's more likely that he has a king in his hand. Just ace queen high, and he's gonna he's gonna three bet all in. And Hines, as you probably saw, was staring at him when he made the bet. And, though we can't see his face here, I think we see it. In a second. On their feet here as Stashko Steady staring. Does he want to take a shot at and that's pretty standard. Right um, we'll the stop it there. I know I said uh, I usually look for this tell and significant turn in river spots, but uh, in the, and, and in this case, uh, I think this tournament, you know, when when the tournament, uh, when the bets are so big in comparison to the stacks, it kind of turns every spot into a potentially significant. But anyway, these are just uh, comparison points, so you can get a sense of his usual MO. So now I'm going to go back and look at some more um, hands where he had a strong hand, so you can again compare it to that first hand when he had aces, when he was uh, avoiding eye contact. Okay, so here's a where he had flop two pair. This was a limped pot, so not too significant, but I think you'll see a major difference in the next few hands. And this one, uh, Heinz has jack five. He hit two pair. Stash go now with chips in hand, and he'll have to try to keep the heat on Heinz. Three million from Martin. Actually, let's go forward Looks to the like river when he's betting. Yeah, let's look at him betting the river here. Now Stashko, some of those chips worth half a million each. This is an interesting bet. I mean, he just called. He's looking down, looking down. 
You know, why would he just Not giving any any eye contact uh, there. Stash go folds. Okay. Here's another one when he has 10-5, and he's rivered two pair here. Ein says 10-5. Stash goes checked. Hines looking down, as you notice, not giving too much eye contact even before he bets. Looks like he wants to take a shot at it finally. It feels like uh, Heinz could have actually rivered a hand here. Four Same situation there. And, Stashko and Heinz had two pair. Let's look again one more time at the one where uh, where Heinz has aces, just so you can watch this again after knowing what. I already showed. Stashko raises it up. Oh, we know they're going in the middle. Yeah, just again, not much, not much uh, eye contact in general, even before he bets. But. He had a lot of finesse the way he did that, and uh, something tells me that he's not very strong here. 10.4 million. Which is funny because the first time I saw this, I thought when I first noticed this, I said, "Oh, Heinz is uh, Heinz is strong here," because that was the first time I'd seen him do that. I think is very strong, but we're gonna find out some more information, see what happens on the flop. And that was the first inkling I got, like, "Oh, that's that was something out of the ordinary." Here and then, once I clued into that, I started seeing it more. In the middle, deuce four, five. And then we'll watch this when he bets his flop. <laughs> Is it frustrating when you put so much in the middle pre-flop and then something like this comes out? Right, I mean, even if Heinz has a hand like he's I mean, that's very unusual for him just staring at the table like that. I mean, no, it's unlikely that Stashko has a piece of that flop. I almost felt like so there he noticed that he was looking at the table so much and felt like he had to some give some eye contact to... Uh, Stashko. Notice the little double check of the cards too. That's a, I haven't really checked for that one, but that could be a uh, little fake of weakness there. He could be doing. I don't know. He might do that regularly though. I can't. I didn't know. I don't know. Heinz figuring that Stashko's hand has nothing to do with that flop. So those were the most uh, significant spots Heinz had that behavior. And the important thing to mention is it's not a 100% reliable tell. Um, he didn't always have this behavior in every hand, uh, but I think you could tell it was definitely statistically significant. And um, uh, one other thing to mention about this, in all of these hands I showed in this uh, heads up game, these two players were sitting directly across from each other. So that's going to be a factor because that increases the amount of potential eye contact and engaging they do with each other. Uh, if they were sitting directly beside each other, you wouldn't be seeing this kind of behavior, or not nearly as much anyway. So I created this rough graph to illustrate the behavior of Heinz, try to map it in a rough way. So it shows how the uh, post-bet staring and the post-bet avoiding of eye contact are both correlated with either weak or strong hands. So it also shows how this is not a 100% reliable thing, but just that the behavior is strongly associated with a certain hand strength. And this also shows another important concept that when there's a range of behavior like this, there's usually one behavior that's more significant and one that's more of a background state and less significant. In this case, the staring is the less significant behavior because it's something that's more of Heinz's baseline behavior. It's something he tried to do all the time. Although there was still some correlation with, I think the the harder he was staring, the more the more directly he was staring, the more indif indicative it was he was uh, bluffing or vulnerable. And the uh, avoiding eye contact was more strongly correlated with a strong hand because it was more unusual. So that's just an important thing to realize because usually in, in a range of behavior like this, there's going to be one behavior that's more tell-like compared to the other behavior that's more common and that tries to be the regular behavior. One last thing to mention is that, uh, just to remind you that this is just one of two tendencies that uh, is 
that some people have. I think for a lot of people, you'll see the opposite, where they'll be more likely to make eye contact with an opponent when they're relaxed and have a big hand and uh, avoid eye contact when they're bluffing. So uh, it's just something to keep in mind depending on uh, what you notice. So like any tell, you just have to see which of these tendencies somebody's uh, falling under and then you know try to see if you can find some correlation with that. Okay, thanks for watching. This has been Zach Elwood for CardRunners.com.